Good afternoon, Money.net Live. Here we go. Peter Thomas hey. of Money.net, uh, Director of Metals Trading. How are you, Peter? Everything's every, everything's wild. Uh, I mean, today has just been insane, Steve. Uh, it, you called out a good day. Uh, uh, the, the, the Russians uh, walked in and went, oh, by the way, I think we're going to cut back production of 500,000 barrels of oil a day. And then the Saudis went, Okay, we're good with that. We'll do that too. We'll join you on that. And gold exploded off the loads and probably ran twenty six dollars. And in the meantime, everybody started selling all the other metals because they just wanted to own gold. So it's been rather ruckus, I'll tell you. Yeah, and you have to ask the question: What's going on with silver as well? It seems to be that uh, both those are okay, though, right? Well, here's the deal. Remember, uh, and and our viewers should listen to this too. Uh, it's a bifurcated product. It's, it, it, it has two sides to it. It's an industrial as well as a precious metal. And if people feel the price of oil is going to go up, it's going to slow up or raise the cost of producing things. So therefore, less silver is consumed. So um, it's putting a little pressure on the silver. And as mm -hmm. you look across the board, as I always do, lead, zinc, copper, everything's getting hit because they're concerned about what's going on. Yeah, you know, what's interesting to me is that you saw over the weekend, the BRICS, the uh, Russia, India, yes. China, all talking about having their own coinage slash way of paying for things. Yes. Um, is that going to affect the way that we pay for gold here? That has been going on for about two years, Steve, um, conservatively. The technology isn't quite there yet. Okay. Uh, but I will share with you that we are seeing a lot of gold going uh, back into China all of a sudden, which was mm. coming out, if you remember. Right. So uh, are, are they stockpiling to pay? I would guess yes. I would say you're probably right. But all the press right now is saying no. I just usually see this stuff six months, a year ahead of time. So right now they're all going to say no. I'm saying it has a real good chance of happening. Yeah, and you know, when you go to websites uh, like yourself and you look to see the buy gold and buy silver, you yep. know, I'm always confused as to what I should be buying. Should I be buying Liberty? Oh. Should I be buying Bullion? What should I be buying right now? Well, the, the how and what to buy, the first thing is, let's get a, let's, let's help our viewers. As you and I have discussed before, we want to make this as educational as we can, as well as newsworthy sure. too. And the thing is, there's two ways to look at this. First off, twice a day, everyone, uh, five banks and the LME, the London Metals Exchange, get together and they set what's called the fix. And the fix is exactly what the price is worth twice a day by this group. And they post it. So you know at a given time what the international worth of gold is. So don't ever be mesmerized by someone trying to sell you some gold underneath the fix. Unless, and this is the important part, the spot price, which is where it is currently trading at now. Now the fix comes out in the morning and the morning fix market might've traded right past it, could be higher, could be lower. So we have two prices that we look at. We look at the fix, so we kind of know where we're at, and then we look at the spot. So now we know what we should be paying. Now, what should we be looking at? Um, or should we be looking at um, gold coins, or should we be looking at bars, Steve? That's, that's mm -hmm. a very big question. And uh, there's a lot of things that go into the manufacture of coins, and I'm actually going to take a second to explain that because it's important. It's called the premium. You make a coin. What does it cost to make that coin? And that premium is then passed along to our buyer. And I hope I'm not going to eat up our clock, but I no, want people fine. to know that you have a manufacturing cost. That's You have a fabrication cost, which is what you do when you stamp a coin. Those of you who follow me and know the various coins I made, for example, when I made the SpongeBob line, and we had the four coins in the treasure chest, and we went through all of that. The fabrication on that cost a lot. We had a lot of trademarks, a lot of things to do. So fabrication is your second cost. Also costs money to pack them. You want to pack them in something secure so they don't get damaged. Then there's an 
an administrative cost of it coming in, what it processed, where it's stored, things of that nature. Then those big hairy guys with bulletproof vests and shotguns, they eat a lot, believe me. <laughs> and they're wandering around keeping an eye on things for you. So they, they want to get paid too. And you now they're holding a shotgun, you usually pay them. So uh, uh, that's your security cost. And then the most important thing to me and for our viewers and what we will offer people is who's holding the insurance policy. You know, I mean, if, if some if something disappears, I want to get paid for it, you know. So your insurance costs is something. And then finally, of course, it costs a little money to move it around. And all seven of those put together is what your premium charges for a coin. And that's why your coin costs more than your bullion bar. Mm -hmm. And so when I recommend a coin and you look at the spot price, which is what it's currently trading at, and then you remember all the things involved in making that coin, and then you say, okay, what is that coin trading at? Well, spots at two, at spots at uh, 1980, but the coins at 2010, that $30 is your premium. All right. And that's what you're going to be paying for. In my particular case, and I've discussed this with Stephen and many of the people around. I like to get my people into what's referred to as sovereign coin. Mm -hmm. A sovereign coin is backed by the full faith of a nation. To me, if I'm buying an American Eagle, which is the number one gold coin in the world, that coin is stamped at the U.S. Mint. And uh, that and the St. Gauden are both uh, were, are, are made here. They're backed by the U.S. government. They guarantee their weight and purity. You can, and also, it qualifies for your IRAs. And we're going to do a separate show on that because it's very, very difficult to cover. We need more time. But we'll talk about it later. But I love that coin. And a real quick shout out to Peter Moy, who was the director of the U.S. Mint. When the plane went down across the way at the Pentagon, Peter Moy, who was the director, ran into his building and made sure every one of his employees got out. Tip mm. of the hat to you, Peter. Nobody knows that story, but I guess what? I just told it. Mm. It took a lot to do that, buddy, because they were telling you you were next and you stood your ground. But at any rate, I love that coin. I love the American Buffalo. It's another one that goes. It's 24 karat gold. If you buy that from us, it's a little soft. 24 karat gold is a little soft. Be careful how you handle that. Great coin. Beautiful coin, too. And, of course, the uh, another coin, which is sovereign, backed by a government, the Canadian maple. Great coin. Sometimes when we buy them in bulk, we can get them to our people at a very nice discount rate. Mm -hmm. Love those coins. And so that's like my three real quick ones, because I know we're kind of pressed for time. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, uh, when I was buying silver from you guys, uh, yeah. you know, you were pretty quick to get turned around. Uh, I think it was less than a few days. So yeah, I, was... I think we got to your coins in three days. Yeah. yeah, you know, and for me, when I'm looking at it now, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a what they call a stacker now, right? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one of the things I'm always asking about the bullion side of things uh -huh. is. Who makes the best bar? I mean, when you look at the stamp, I see uh, Mathi or I see Asahi yeah. uh, and I see all of those Silvertown. Let me, uh, Jason, uh, Mathi, Mathi, uh, Asahi, good firm. I, I know the director over there. She's a great gal, smart. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, a lot of people that make a good bar, but here's where I step in. All right, I have a responsibility to the Money.net people. To all of the people that are directed to us from various firms, I feel I have a, a, a responsibility to you. And the first bar that I, I always recommend is the only bar that has what's called Veriscan on it. Mm. And Veriscan is an anti-counterfeiting embellishment on the back of the bar that you can literally take your cell phone, download the Veriscan app, Take your bar in your hand, scan it with your phone, and it'll tell you when it was poured and if it's real. It's wow. the only one that can do that. Now, I did a half hour special show, which I'm going to send to Steve to attach to this. And it was done with Scott Spitzer, probably one of the most knowledgeable people in the metals business in the world, 
uh, CEO of PAMP, MTB, great guy, really, really sharp. He brought that onto the scene. I always recommend my people get something that they can verify is real. And that's why we, we use that bar. And uh, if you want to see it, uh, I'm sure that, uh, Steve, you'll be able to attach that. And do you think we'll soon see blockchain within the uh, the markets of the of the gold? Hear it all the time. I got blockchain. I got this. I got. I haven't seen it yet. When somebody okay. comes to me and says, "I I'm running on blockchain," it, and blockchain would be very good for us. You know, know exactly when the order came in, so I could match the price to it. Know exactly when it goes up. But I pretty much do that anyway. I know when your order comes in. I I see it. It, our guys in the back know when it came in. We know the price we charge you. Um, you know, we know when we're insuring it to be shipped or if it's being put in in the vault in your name. If you're opening an account, that paperwork comes in. We know where it is. So, I mean, it, it might speed things up for us, which would make things a little less expensive. It'd be great. But at the moment, we haven't used it and we haven't needed it in the last 80 years. So I guess we're doing OK, you know. I gotcha. All right, Peter Thomas, we'll see you right back here, man. All right. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to uh, doing uh, some anti-counterfeiting stuff, and I'm looking forward to doing some uh, uh, things on global production as well. Global production. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you back here next week, Peter. Sounds good, Steve. Thanks for the time.